Welcome to the latest edition of Inside Carolina. I'm your host, Hannah Horn, a proud alumna of the university. In this episode, we are plugging into the latest research happening here inside of the university's College of Engineering and Computing. Now here, there are six departments in 40 academic programs leading innovation around the state and really around the world for the U.S. military, NASA, and General Motors, just to name a few. You're gonna meet a leading battery expert and then we're gonna fly high inside the college's aerospace engineering program. So buckle in and tray tables up. We're going inside Carolina. Nestled inside of the college's engineering and computing is what is called MLEAF. Bear with me. The Mustang Laboratory of Electrocatalyst and Fuels, led by Bill Mustang. He is the Associate Dean of Research and a Professor of Chemical Engineering. And while this is a very daunting subject, again, stay with me, I believe you'll find that this is subject matter that we're really talking about in our everyday lives and certainly seeing in the headlines. Dr. Mustang, thank you so much for joining oh, us. Thank you so much for having me. There is a buzz about, especially electric cars, for example, but still some challenges to over overcome before this is mainstream. Wide, widely used, accepted new technology. How are you working on that kind of technology specifically with electric mobility? Yeah, great question. So we're doing it a couple of different ways. I think one is on the hydrogen side. So a lot of people think hydrogen powered cars. They don't necessarily think about electric cars, but certainly they are. You're making DC power, um, high efficiency, uh, it's fantastic. And the other side, of course, is batteries. And so, you know, our group works on both hydrogen generation and then hydrogen use. And then the same thing um, on, the, on the battery side. We're doing a lot related to materials and about the design of, of new batteries for cars and other applications. An interesting part of what you just said as well is that it's not only research you and your fellow colleagues are doing, but you're including students into this research as well who are, who are learning how to create real world solutions for real world problems. Yeah, how are right. you bringing them into this conversation through, I guess, lab work? Yeah, so I think, um, Talking about bringing students in, I don't think give the students nearly enough credit. I mean, the students are the lifeblood of all the things that we do at a university. So we have undergraduate students, graduate students are getting their masters, their PhD. They're the ones that are in the lab every day really, really, really pushing the edges of technology. No doubt the uh, the students who are um, working with you on these projects are getting incredible career experience. What are some of the jobs and, and uh, places that they're taking this experience into and, and changing our world? Mm, great question. So one is the companies that are funding the work. You know, one of the things about being very practically oriented and having a lot of industrial funding is that those people use those projects as recruiting opportunities for students, whether it's for internships or full-time jobs. So the companies that are actually funding the work take a lot of our students when they graduate, which is really fantastic. Um, another outlet for students is the National Labs. And you know, just in the last you know, three years or so, uh, more than half of my graduate students have left and taken positions at National Labs and some of the undergrads as well. Um, lastly, people used to think of chemical engineers working in petrochemical facilities or manning a distillation column or something. Actually, a lot of my students now are also going and doing engineering consulting and doing those types of things. And so there are actually these new projects that you have that are sort of stretching the boundary of traditional engineering disciplines have opened up the possibility for completely new jobs that maybe they wouldn't have done 50 years ago, which is also exciting. I am super amped up about the work you're doing. Best of luck. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Mustaine. Now from cars to the high flying success of another area of study, aerospace. The University of South Carolina is supporting South Carolina's industry aerospace with its education and research. Leading the effort is Seng He Wan, director of the aerospace engineering program and associate professor of mechanical engineering. Dr. Wan, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Engineering students who work and study here are doing research for some of the state's 500 different aerospace related companies and suppliers. This is the state's only aerospace engineering program. Why was it important that the university focus its efforts in a major on both the undergraduate, graduate level and provide that kind of research and education? Right, before we had aerospace program, mechanical engineering has been there. But if you look at the aerospace industries and the research areas, it is more specialized into certain areas. 
And then having the Boeing coming down here, having the big factory there, and then they do produce Dreamliner 787, mostly from carbon composite areas. So that was the motivation to install aerospace engineering programs so we can educate students that who can support industries in South Carolina. And when you talk about carbon composites, that's what planes are made of, right? right. I know I'm simplifying this for people like me, but that's what planes are made of. And so studying that is awfully important to right. what happens here. Is that correct? Yes, and then depending on how you structure the carbon composite materials, how you do thermal treatment, it combines you know, material science, you know, mechanical engineering, and many other disciplines to make sure that you can create the best materials for the aircraft. So it requires some attention for the students to know the fundamentals going on in the process. Ashley, I'm really impressed with all the technology that I'm seeing. We have a flight simulator behind us. Is this kind of technology in, inside of the major and in other classrooms as well? So as you get further along in our major, we start to have lab courses that we have to take. And those are the courses where you start to see the technology that you've learned about and actually start to use it. Um, so for one of our lab one projects, we actually have to design an airplane and fly it using these flight simulators. Do you think people would be surprised at the innovation and technology that's used in the aerospace program here at USC? Yes, it surprised me. I mean, it, it, was, it was extremely surprising to see that we actually had so much funding. I didn't think a program this young had such a foot in the door. And then once I you know, got, a, got familiar with everything, it was, it was extremely surprising to see that, oh, these budgets are actually pretty big. And you, know, you can see that there's gonna be a lot of room for growth. A large um, part of your work here is also inside of the McNair Center for Aerospace and Innovation and Research. Sure. And that center, I would be remiss in not mentioning that that is named after Ronald McNair, mm -hmm. um, a South Carolinian who tragically died in 1986 in the Challenger explosion. I remember being a little girl watching that on television that day. Why is it important that his legacy continue in the work that's happening so, inside the McNair Center? If you look at the aerospace industry in South Carolina, there are, we do have probably more than 500 industries in the state. And no one knew that South Carolina was the, you know, the main state for the aerospace industry. Having the McNair Center and the focusing on innovation on aerospace engineering, having his name as a center is actually appealing a lot of people in this state. So we try to keep his legacy in the aerospace, particularly you know, rocket propulsion and the space explorations that could be a good inspiration to the next generation to come and then spend their time in our program. Well, you heard it here first on Inside Carolina. <laughs> New innovation. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. A very special thank you to the College of Engineering and Computing for hosting us today. What a warm welcome. You're doing some incredible work and your Gamecock family is proud. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and fellow alumni. We'll see you next month here at Inside Carolina.